Hi, it's Professor Dickerson. Uh, so this video is going to show you some tips and tricks that are going to allow you to recode your data to do more creative or more meaningful analyses. So um, you'll notice with these uh, real estate data files, um, most of the variables are numeric, which is great if you want to, I don't know, estimate a mean. But um, if you want to compare different groups, uh, right now the options are pretty limited. Uh, and trust me, I don't want to look at 30 poster projects where everybody uses the property type as their, their grouping variable. So let's look at how you might create some other meaningful groups. So for instance, uh, the sold dates. Uh, right now, these are all individual days. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to do, say, an ANOVA across the different days. But uh, if we just group these by month, then we could. So here's how you do that. Um, we're going to go to Tables, Sort. Let's get these in chronological order. And let's sort by sold date. All right, so my original unsorted data is still in its uh, original spreadsheet, but I get a new window where now everything is sorted by the sold date. Now, notice um, there are actually a lot of properties here that didn't have that information available. But if I scroll down, once I get to row 52, we, we have dates. Okay, so I'm going to add in a new column right next to these dates. Uh, I'm going to do that by doing to the next column over. And in the title area, I'm going to right click and insert columns. Okay, let's title this month. And then next to my first April sale, say April. All right. And then I see that my Aprils keep going until row 83. So I'm going to go up to my uh, place where I said April. I'm going to right click there and say fill, fill to row 83. So it's just like uh, in Excel if you drag down and uh, fill in. All right, then I could go down to the next month, August, and do the same thing there. Uh, this one goes to row 119, I believe. All right, so since you should only have three or six months, this won't take too long. Uh, I went ahead and um, did this in another file already to save some time in the video. Not this one, this one, okay. All right, so now let's analyze the distribution of the months. Maybe we wanna test if uh, sales were uniformly distributed across the month. Okay, so here's a bar chart showing the different months. Uh, and it's, I guess, Jump was smart enough to put them in chronological order, which is nice. And we can see that it looks like sales peaked in May and June and then started to taper off. Uh, however, uh, I downloaded this file in early October of last year. So I know that this two sales isn't really legitimate. It's just because I, um, I downloaded the data before October was even over. So let's say I know those don't really count. I want to get rid of them. So I can click on uh, that, that bar of the bar chart and that's gonna highlight them with the stripes. And then in my data table, they will be correspondingly highlighted. And they're down near the bottom, I believe. There they are, only two in October. So while they're highlighted, I can right click over by the row numbers and say hide and exclude. So the, uh, we get a little Ghostbuster symbol saying that it is not going to include these in the analysis. And we have little sunglasses saying, you know, they'll, they're incognito. They, they won't even show up on the graph. So now if I analyze the distribution of month again, it looks like before, except it's like October never existed. And then actually thinking about it, probably I should do that for April as well because my, my six month window didn't go all the way back to April 1st. Okay. Uh, but if I did that, then I could, uh, with the five uh, remaining months, see if there was a uniform distribution by testing the probabilities. 
All right, so that sort of sort and relabel thing could be used uh, for a lot of different um, variables here. For instance, maybe you want to compare properties that have one bath, uh, one or one and a half, versus those with more. So you could sort by the number of baths, add a new column, and maybe call them like few baths versus many baths, you know, however you want to categorize it as long as it makes sense. Uh, and then you'd have a, a new categorical variable that you could maybe do a, a two sample t test with. Okay, um, let's do just a little bit more with the months. Uh, I'm going to include the Octobers for this next part. So if you want to undo this, uh, just highlight them again, right click, and pick hide and exclude. And it'll, it'll get rid of them. So now October is back in play. All right, so this little red triangle above the row numbers lets you manipulate the rows. So I'm going to click there and go color or mark by column. So it's going to let me color code or assign different little symbols according to this variable. Um, let's see. Uh, let's just go with plain old dots for now. Um, but maybe I want to assign a color scheme that's uh, more to my liking, or maybe that sort of reflects what variable I'm trying to depict. So for instance, uh, seasonal changes, maybe a color gradient would make sense, where you can kind of see one month blend into the next. So they've got all sorts of color schemes in here. Uh, one that I kind of like, it, it lined up well with the months, was this magma. So April in the spring and May are more of a pastel color, and then the, the brighter colors are in the summer, and then in the fall it, it fades to black. <laughs> kind of like life. All right, so if I press OK, now these are color-coded. And if I make a map, this was covered in the, the first video, Um, we can see those trends over time, and um, you know maybe in certain markets there might be trends where certain areas uh, sold more at certain times of the year. For instance, uh, families with school-aged kids often try to move during the summer so that the school year isn't interrupted. So maybe the family-friendly neighborhoods would have different patterns than the the uh, retiree neighborhoods. Okay. All right, um, on the subject of maps, uh, here's another way that maybe you would want to categorize uh, the data is by geographic region. So there's a couple ways you could do that. Um, a very easy sort would be if you picked some threshold latitude and or threshold longitude. Like let's say in Boston, it looks like um, the kind of middle dividing line here, is it about a latitude of 42.36? So you could go to the spreadsheet and sort by latitude and categorize everyone above 42.36 as being in the north and those below being in the south. So that's one way you could do it. Um, let's, let's turn off the colors for the months. Um, I'm going to scrap this map. All right, so let's say you do whatever you need to do with these colors. You don't want them anymore. Uh, you can clear row states, and they'll disappear. All right, so let's say um, here's a plain old map just showing location. Uh, maybe we notice that Boston is split up according to these rivers, and so maybe we want to do a comparison of these three, three main land masses. <laughs> Uh, let's call them uh, downtown, uh, Cambridge area, and maybe North Boston. So how could we do that? Um, that would not be an easy sort because notice the rivers curve a little bit. What we could do, though, is if you 
click and drag on the map, you can select certain properties. So if I'm careful, um, this selection only includes ones that I want to categorize as the Boston. Now, if I go to my spreadsheet, those will be highlighted just like they're highlighted on the map. So while they're highlighted, I can go over to my row area, right click, and maybe assign a color like um, blue for Boston. All right, so now those that were selected on the map are in blue and I look back at the map, there they are. So those ones I already got, and then maybe I grab another chunk from Boston. But be careful, I don't want these Cambridge ones to slip in. So I'll have to do this kind of uh, with different rectangles. But I could fill in so that I have all the ones down here in blue. And then maybe I go up to Cambridge and uh, Harvard's up there. So let's make them crimson. <laughs> all right, so select the, the ones in Cambridge and then go to my spreadsheet. And next to their row numbers, we'll assign colors, make them crimson. And now on the map, there they are. Okay, so you could fill in similarly like that. And then uh, in your spreadsheet, it'd be easy to um, identify which ones to categorize as those three different regions if you were to add in a new column. All right, so um, be creative. I mean, you could sort by the year that it's built, the, the square feet, um, price, you know, maybe group different zip codes together into certain neighborhoods. Because after all, a lot of these places, if you look at the different cities, there's gonna be a lot of them. So uh, you're not gonna have the sample size in, in enough to, um, do a lot of your analyses. Like there's no way you have at least 30 properties for each neighborhood. But if you group them appropriately, like say, uh, you know, regular Boston, Cambridge, and North Boston, each of those three regions would have at least 30. So maybe you could do an ANOVA on the price and see if the mean price varies among at least two of these uh, regions. All right. So, um, I hope with this project you'll be creative. Um, think about, you know, uh, what sort of variables would be important to you if you were going to buy a house. Um, and one nice thing is this isn't real life, so uh, you're not capped to a realistic budget. Um, you can think about more expensive homes, kind of a, a dream scenario. Uh, so I look forward to seeing what results you come up with. Uh, signing off.